Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and today we're going to go over how we can log in once before all of our tests and use that state using Playwright's storage state capabilities. So a common issue with many legacy test automation paths is authentication is being done before each individual test. Well, the good news is with Playwright, we can cut that out right now. We have the ability to log in once and reuse that state across all of our tests. So let's just jump into the code right now. I've got um, a basic test, which is going to the Demo Blaze website. It's logging in and then it's expecting the log out button to uh, be visible. Let's just run this to make sure this works. Awesome. So that works. And I will say I'll put this code in the description as well. So you can start off at the same point that I am. So what happens when I have another test here, let's rename that basic test two, and we'll get rid of the login functionality. We're just expecting the logout button to be visible. Well, of course, if I run this, you're going to expect that this is going to fail and you'd be correct. There we are. Basic test passed because we logged in, but this one's going to fail because it can't find this locator because we haven't logged in. Now, you might immediately think, oh, I could use hooks to solve this problem and do a before all in here. Well, yeah, you could, but then it becomes unmanageable when you have multiple test files. So if I create another test file, just duplicate in test one and we'll call it test2.spec.ts, I'll delete this test and we'll just keep this one in here. If I rerun now, of course, we're expecting two to fail. Even if I had the before hook into here, this test would still fail because it'd need to log in. And this is where it comes where I talked about the legacy test automation packs is when you're trying to log in before each individual test or before a group of tests, but multiple times, you're just adding extra time to your execution for no need and increasing the risk of flakiness. So Playwright has a solution to this. So let's just clear this down. And there's a few steps to get this working, but once it's working, it's fairly simple. And the first thing we want to do is create a global setup file. And what this setup file will do is will it will run once before all of your tests, and then we'll put the authentication code in there, and then we'll use some Playwright storage state capability to store the state of our application after we have logged in. Okay, so let's create our global setup file. So at the top level, I'm just going to say global setup.ts. And inside here, it's going to be a function, and we'll call it global setup. And inside here is where we're going to set up our Playwright browser, um, the page, and login. So let's say const browser. And it'll be of type browser equals await chromium, which is going to import from Playwright test dot launch and tell you what we'll say. Let, let's say we, we want it to run in headed mode. So we'll add the option to say headless set to false, which means we'll actually see this executing. We have to import the browser as well from Playwright test. So don't forget to do that. Awesome. So that's our browser created. So what I'm going to do now is create a new context just because that's kind of the best practice. So we'll say context await browser dot new context. Awesome. Close that off. And the next thing we want to do is create our page. So we can say here const page. I'll set it to a type page. I just realized we didn't set the context to a type. That's fine. We can go back and do that. Await context dot new page. And we want to import this, of course, from Playwright Test. So at this point, we've set up our browser, we've got the new context, and we've set up a page. To make things easier, I'm now just going to copy all of this go to and login code inside my global setup. Don't forget, you got to import the expect as well, which we want to, we'll want to keep in there because we want to say make sure we logged in before we save the state. And that assertion can do that for us because once we see the logout button, we know that it's all good to go. And I'm pretty sure I've had some issues before with the timeout. So I'm gonna actually just add a timeout in here. You don't need to do this, but if you're following my example, I'm just gonna add it 30 seconds so I know for sure it has logged in. Now, nothing new is happening here. All we're doing is setting up our browser, setting up our page, and we're logging in. Now, we wanna actually save the state. So let's say save the state of the web page. 
which essentially means we are logged in. And to do this, Playwright gives us gives us everything out of the box. So we can just say await page.context. And then we say storage state. And then we want to set where we want the storage state file to be created. So it's not here at the moment, but when we actually execute this test, a new JSON file will be created with it with all the details we need to be in that logged in state. So I'm going to say path. And I'm going to keep it at the top level. Of course, you can put it wherever you want it to go. And I'll say login auth.json. And then last but not least, because we've set everything up, we want to make sure that we don't forget to clean everything up. So I'm going to say await browser.close. Awesome. And that's it for the global setup file. So like I said, this will run once before everything. But if I'm to execute the test right now, you're going to see this hasn't executed. And the reason why is because we haven't told Playwright in his configuration to actually look at this global setup file and run. I also haven't exported the file, which could be an issue. So let's export it. So say export default, otherwise it is going to hit and we named it global setup. So export default global setup. But even if I rerun this, it's still going to fail because we haven't defined it in the Playwright config yet. We haven't said use this global setup file. So there we are, we've got the failing test. So let's just clear that to make everything nice and pretty. Well, I will say as well, stay tuned for the end of the video because I'm going to show you how you can do this storage state, saving the state directly using Playwright's code generator as well. But I prefer to show you how you can do it manually just so you have a, um, a more solid understanding. And of course, one thing I do want to say is if you're in a position where this your storage state or when, once you're authenticated you can just keep that file then you don't really need to keep executing this global setup because you'll already have it all logged in it might just be periodically where you need to update the login auth json so that could also save you time as well but in this case i'm gonna imagine that we get logged out after say 30 40 minutes in a couple of hours which in this case having a global setup file definitely makes the most sense so like I said, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Well, because we need to go into the Playwright config now and we have to say, use my global setup file, but also set the storage state because we haven't done that. All we've done at the moment is when we have this global setup running is we store in it into this login auth JSON file, but we also need to tell our test to use that. So that's the next step. So let's go into the Playwright config. And right at the top then, I'm just gonna say, uh, it'd be global setup, so we can see it's right here. You also have a global teardown as well, which you just saw, which you can run after all of the tests to, you know, clean up your environment and do whatever else you want to do. But let's stick, got, stick up to topic on this. We can say point to the global setup file. First part, done, nice and easy. Now, if I run my tests, are they all gonna pass? Or will one fail because I'm already authenticated on this one? So then it's going to look for login, which doesn't exist. Well, no, both are wrong. What will happen is our global setup will execute and we'll be able to see that from a new JSON file created. Here we are, login auth. However, only that one test passes, which is this one, which is logging in again. And the reason why is because we haven't said to use this state that we've logged into yet. Let's do that next. Let's go inside our use. And of course, if you're using projects, you can add it into project level, or in my case, because we'd only hit in one URL, I'll do it into the overarching use. However, what you can see is if you have, say, multiple environments for projects, so you have a test environment and a prod environment, you can choose which auth file to use. You could you could generate two different auth files and say, for my test environment project, I want to run login auth test.json. And then for my prod project, I want to use the login auth production JSON file. But in this case, I'm just going to set it at the top level. So I can say storage state. And then we just want to point to the file. So it was login auth.json. I definitely recommend just copying the name of this and pasting in because the amount of times I've had typos with mine and I've been scratching my head why it doesn't work. Let's clear that. 
So after the clear, let's remove these. Now I'm logging in for this test because it shouldn't be needed anymore. If I now uh, run this in headed mode, here's our login, our global setup, which has updated that JSON file. And now it's already logged in and it's passed the three tests because it's already logged in. I've got multiple test files all logging in once from this global setup file using this login auth, which will get updated at the start of every test run. Like I said, you don't need this global setup file once you have this login auth.json. That's there. I could actually say, don't use this global setup now, and it'll just try and authenticate. So if I comment that out, it'll just try and authenticate based off this login auth JSON file, which worked. There we are. Of course, if this was to expire, then we'd have an issue, which is why I do suggest using global setup um, because you haven't got to manually intervene every time, but you are going to know your product better. So let's clear that down. And another thing I want to touch on before we go to the code generator part is you might be thinking, well, what if I don't want to be logged in for certain tests or if you maybe want to use different authentication for certain tests. Well, there's multiple ways of doing this, but here's just a couple that popped to my mind that could get you started on this topic. So let's say this basic test two in this second test file, um, we don't want to be logged in. Well, one of the most simple ways we can do it is we could say, let's extend, let's add the fixture context. And we could actually say await context dot clear cookies. And that's going to clear the cookies from our login auth, which in this case means we won't be logged in. So if I actually execute the test and tell we don't need to run it in headed because it was too quick anyway. The login is still going to happen. The two tests will pass in the first test file, but the second test file is going to fail because we've essentially said clear the cookies for this, which means we've actually cleared the login auth state. That's one way of doing it. So if I remove that, and I'll just rerun the test to show you that it all pass in. Another way is changing what file you want to directly inside your test file. So what I could do, let me paste this and tell you what, we'll rename it to North, which in this case, it could be auth, but for a different user. What I'm gonna actually do, simplest form is I'm gonna clear everything out and instead of now pointing to login auth, so in the config, everything will still use login auth because I haven't changed this. But inside my test2 spec, I can say test.use storage state, and we can choose what state we want to. So imagine this was a separate user. Um, what was it called? Noauth.json. Imagine this was a separate user, and that's capital N. It'd log in with a different user, but in this case, we're going to have the same issue where the test will fail because we've said use this state instead of the, the generic one in the config, the default one in the config, um, meaning it's going to fail. So let's run that. The global setup happened, and now we've got two pass in, and we should see one failing. Awesome. So that's it using state. Now, before we log off, I do want to show how we can use this with code generator as well. So let's clear everything to make it pretty and uh, we'll close everything down. So let's imagine we don't have the global setup or our auth files there. What I'll actually do is I'll remove the global setup in this case. And I'll remove the using of the storage state. So if I run my tests now, we should be in a position where everything is failing. We never want to see three failures, but that's good in this case because that's what we wanted. So let's clear that. And how do we use the code generator? Well, I'm going to actually just open up the documentation and I'll put a link in the description to this as well, where inside code gen, kindly playwright already have this documented and made it really simple for us. So I can just copy this code gen command. And of course, we want to save where we want to save it to, like we did in our global setup. Let's paste that and tell you what, we'll just keep it as auth JSON because we've already got login auth there. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, this is, of course, going to open up the Playwright inspector onto a blank page. So we want the demo blaze. I could have done that in the command line if I thought, but let's just say 
demo please so let's open that back up with the inspector and go here and all i'm going to do is follow the same steps that we did when we manually did it so i'm going to say login our username is test password is test and we're going to click login okay so we we logged in i'm now just going to close this down and what we should see here now is we have this auth.json file, which has actually given us what we need to be logged in, exactly the same as the login auth one we have here. Now then, you could do the same thing. You could say inside your Playwright config, switch the storage state to the file that was called auth.json, and this would all work exactly the same as expected. And of course, you could kind of reverse engineer what we've just done, where you could create a global setup file, copy the code generated code and paste into global setup. But in this case now, if I just run the code, what we're gonna see, or we should see, all tests pass in because we're using that authenticated state that we've just generated. Oh, actually, we've had a failure uh, in the basic test to test to spec. Oh, that's because we've set the storage state to north. So let's save that and rerun. And what we should see is all three tests are passing using that generated state file. There we are, three tests passing. Perfect. And that's it. As always, if you do have any questions, please drop a comment below. A like and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.